the fullness of God's life, the secret of victory. So, just reading the title, no, it again um, uh, heralds or proclaims that um, the same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you because the life of Jesus is the one that um, provides or allows you to live the resurrection life. Right? But, but before that, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this um, Bible study group. We thank you, Lord, for this family and friends. Lord, as we study your word, we pray for the for the spirit of for Holy Spirit that you would teach us the spirit, spirit of revelation, Lord, of um, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, we pray for wisdom as we go through verses, as we go through paragraphs, Lord. Father, just um, um, touch us and uh, make us understand, Lord, that indeed everything is finished and our identity is whole because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that as we enter into 2024, we, do, we don't need to fear, Lord, because you, our Heavenly Father, is our good Heavenly Father. And we pray that as we, as we journey into 2024, we would just um, experience, Lord, more and more um, in our lives, really, your goodness, oozing, Lord, from your throne of grace. Thank you, Jesus. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, we are not living our lives trying to become more like God or more godly. Because before, we were taught na, oh, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to sacrifice so that you can live a um, um, godly life. That's the lie, actually, that Eve fell for in the Garden of Eden. Because we cannot become more godly than, than we are right now. You and I, I cannot become more godly than I am because I am, I am the image and the likeness of God. You and I were created in the image and likeness of God. And this is more so your reality and my reality because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. So ito yung essence ng mirror, mirror uh, Bible translation that we go back and really identify, identify, and participate in the uh, finished work, in the um, uh, the gospel of grace, the gospel of peace, that um, uh, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and, and his ascension to the throne of God has uh, 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 is already is already given to us, right? And this is now our identity. So it's it's an identity issue. So it's not something that um, you do, and it provides your identity. But you are actually in the image and likeness of God. So the title the title kanina de ba? Um, it's about life. So Zoe life. So we choose every day for the year 2024. We choose life, not death. So in Deuteronomy 30 verse 19, the NKJV it says, "I call heaven and earth to record this day against you." that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, therefore, sabi nga ng writer who is Moses, choose life that both you and your seed, meaning your children, may live. So, um, uh, I was talking to a good friend of mine yesterday. You know that the, the freedom that the Lord has given us is truly freedom because you can do actually whatever you want to do. Really? Yes, you can even choose. You can even to choose uh, do bad things because that is freedom. Because if you're only allowed to do good things, then that's not freedom, right? But the essence of the gospel of grace is that when you hear and hear about how good he is, you are now free to want him because that is exactly the desire of the Lord for you and I, right? He wants you and I to want him. He wants you and I to have a relationship with him. That is freedom because you are choosing between life and death. And when we choose to want him, when we choose to want life, that is most um, honorable and that is worship unto the Lord. Tama ba? Diba? Because, kasi mali yung sinasabi na ano eh, na, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, you know, the gospel of grace actually is... Um, Diba, uh, maraming nagsasabi na ano na uh, uh, 
Ibig mong sabihin, pwede mong gawin lahat? Actually, yes. Actually, yes. Because that is freedom. But the thing is, as we hear and hear about the gospel of grace and His goodness, we are our desires in our hearts are changed. And now you, we see ourselves wanting to want Him. Wanting to want the things that God actually wants for us. Hallelujah. Ang ganda, no? So, now we understand na, ah, it, it's not something na nagpipilit. So, the Holy Spirit wants you, and the Holy Spirit teaches us every day to want Him. Right? To want our relationship with the Father to grow. Hallelujah. Parang ano, parang sa, di ba sa mag-asawa? Di ba? I've actually used this um, example before. So, for example, tinanong ako ni Alex, ah, uh, Oh, Joe, why, why did you, ano, why did you marry me? Why did you marry me? Sasabihin ko sa kanya, ah, because I want to, ano, kunwari, ano, na, nasa state siya, no? I want, because I married you because I want to go to the United States of America. That is so very sad, right? It's not, uh, the, the reason why I married him is I want to go to, to a place. Parang, the reason why you accepted Jesus Christ is for you to avoid hell, right? And you want to go to heaven, but that is actually not the gospel. The gospel actually declares that uh, uh, now your life is hidden with Christ in God, right? That it's all about relationship. He wants us to choose life, Zoe life. So it doesn't just say choose any life. It points back to that singular specific life, the life, the life of the blessing, the Zoe life, which is the God life. So because in choosing that life, it says you and your descendants will live. So when you choose, when you want Him, when you want to be with Him, the it's you're choosing life, Zoe life. The word will live is Sao, Sao in Greek Septuagint, and at least at its definition, to enjoy real life, living water, having vital power in itself, exerting the same upon the soul, to be strong, full of vigor, and powerful. So choosing life would cause them and their generation to live the abundant, very good, finished life. The life is a vital power in them that affected their souls, their mind, hearts, will, emotions, conscience. So by choosing life, our experiences would be abundant life and not the manifestations of death, sickness, disease, poverty, lack, fear, etc. Hallelujah. So, The blessing is life. Di ba yung, uh, uh, ano ba yung kanta na The Blessing, Lex? May His favor be upon you. Di ba? It's the, the blessing actually after this, pakinggan nyo. Ang ganda. The blessing is life and the curse is death. These are conditions of existence. Yung being blessed is not something, not objects or re of reward and punishment. Again, these are conditions, yung blessing and curse are conditions of existence or state, not objects of reward and punishment. Because we often refer to blessings as an object of reward. Oh, we receive something, we receive gifts, and we call it blessing that we receive. Those things are the fruit of the blessing. Those things are the fruit of the blessing. But what we're, what we're talking about here is a condition of your existence, your identity. Your possession. So parang yung, parang yung palaging sinasabi na God is positioning you. Huh? No more. You are already positioned. Because it is finished. So if you are thinking you're still being positioned, there is um, uh, something wrong with the uh, narrative. Right? Because it's either life or death. Dalawang position lang. A condition in which you have been placed to live in and to dwell. That condition before the cross used to be called, before the cross used to be called the death or the curse. But now, because of the finished work of Jesus Christ, when he shouted, it is finished, now your life oozes with life or blessing. Hallelujah. Because in 1 John 5, 1-2, it says, He who has Jesus, he who has the Son, have the life. He who has Jesus has everything. He who has the Son has the life. Therefore, we could also say, He who has the Son has the blessing. 
again, when he talks, when we talk about the curse and the blessing, we're not talking about some reward or punishment, but the condition of existence. Just like sin and death were conditions of existence, so the curse on humanity was death, and the curses, plural, were simply the natural effects of a spiritual root. They were man's natural experiences that, result, that resulted from the curse of death. That's why sickness and diseases are not of a biological origin. And, and that's also why poverty and lack do not originate in the economy or your job. They are all the effects of the death or the curse. So the curse on humanity was death and the curses were simply the effects of the spiritual root called death. We, as the body of Christ, as believers, haven't gone far enough in our understanding. That's why it's so very good to have this, um, uh, to, to study the word with you every week. Because we haven't understand actually the fullness of his finished work and what this means for us. Wholeness in every area of our lives, filled with all the fullness of the Godhead and empowered to live in the realm of the Spirit. All of that now is this earthly life. In Galatians 3.13, it, it, it does not say, Christ has redeemed us from the curses, plural, having borne the curses, plural, on his body on the cross. But it says Christ has redeemed us from the curse, having become the curse. Maliwanag ano? It's, it's not the things that you do, but it is the condition, death itself. Hallelujah. So, Sometimes we feel the effects of death, right? So, but uh, a friend of mine yesterday, I was talking to her. So, when you are experiencing um, sickness, experiencing uh, sickness in your body, simply look look at it like um, uh, the flower, uh, flowers on a vase. So, parang buhay pa siya, no? Nararamdaman mo ba kasi, kasi uh, nararamdaman mo siya? But actually, it's already cut to the root. Patay na yan kasi wala na siyang ugat. Ganon. So, Christ becoming the curse means he became all of death. He became all of death, just like he became all of sin. He became all of death so that all of life could become could become your only condition. He became all of sin so that all righteousness could become your only condition. He became all sin and death and we became all righteousness and life. We became only all blessed. He redeemed us from a condition not things. He redeemed us from the curse. He did not redeem us from sickness, disease, and lack, etc. And because he has redeemed us from the cause, which is the curse, which is the which is death, there, is, there are no more curse that remain. No sickness, no disease, no lack, no fear. So the aral natin before, no, in Exodus, uh, because you are forgiven, Therefore, there is no more sickness. Hallelujah! Kasi nakat na siya. Naputol. Parang ganito. Although sometimes, no, may na-experience mo yung mga effect-effect niya. Our condition now is only the God life, only the blessing. This is the condition of our existence, whether we don't know it or not. And whether we believe it or not, you're not blessed because you get things. You're blessed because you have the life. And because you have the life with Jesus, you live in this place. You live in this place called the blessing. They're synonymous. And in that place that Paul calls new life, there is no sickness, no disease, no lack, and no fear. It is finished. Hallelujah. And in Romans 8, 11, it says, The Spirit of Christ quickened or gave life to our physical body. The mirror Bible says it this way, our union with Christ further reveals that because the same spirit that awakened the body of Jesus from the dead inhabits us, we equally participate in his resurrection. In other words, we actually experience his resurrection in the same act of authority whereby God raised Jesus from the dead. He co-restores your body to life by his indwelling spirit. Your body need never again be an excuse for an inferior expression of the Christ's life. Just as it was reckoned dead in Christ's death, it is now reckoned alive in his resurrection. His life now is flowing through your entire being, your entire spirit, mind, emotions, will, and your physical body. 
Our body was co-restored with His, and this is true with your physical body. Equally true, it is a fully glorified body. In Luke 5, in the story of Jesus healing a leper by stretching out His hand and touching Him, the word touch, which is haptomai, meaning a touch that alters, change, or modify someone. Can you imagine? Parang ganito, no? Di ba, tinatch lang ni Jesus, gumaling. But ang sinasabi ng Romans 8.11, the same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is now in you. Hallelujah! It's, it's not a mere touch only. So when Jesus touched the leper, his body was altered and transformed. He was made completely healed and completely whole. whole. How much more is this true in us as new creation? He didn't just touch us. We are joined to him as his soul life, his resurrection life, flows through our entire being and transform every part of us because it is finished. Because the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead physically dwells in you. That spirit eliminated death and gave life to all. I'm not sure how it will, how it will look like or unfold, but we are convinced that if we believe we must die a physical death, then we are still buying the illusion. It tasted death for every person. So let's just stop spiritualizing scripture based on our experiences or rather lack of experience regarding physical health, divine health, or prosperity. In 2 Timothy 1.10, it clearly says, Jesus abolished death, severed, brought it to naught, made idle or no effect, having brought to light, life and immortality, um, life which is Zoe, Zoe means God's life in us, as us, and immortality, inability to experience deterioration, decay, or breaking down through the gospel. So, it's a great scripture. Let's be like little children and simply take this verse to its face value. Actually, believing what it says, faith is always now. And so, in this life, as he is, so I am in this life, actually now. He is immortal, eternal. He cannot die. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dies no more. Death has no more dominion over you and over me. Hallelujah. Because now it says that the scripture declares you have a kainos life. Diba na-aral natin to in one of the early, early Bible study. Romans 6, 4. Therefore, we are buried with him through the baptism, through baptism into death. Just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in the newness of life. Ito yung newness, which is kainos in Greek. Paul is telling us that because of the death and resurrection of Jesus, we walk in the newness of life. We may be oblivious or not be not so concerned, but nevertheless, we walk in it. The word should in this verse is in ayor, is in aoris. Ano yung aoris? Complete, di ba? Paul is expressing the desire that we realize the newness of life, that we indeed walk in now, here in this life, not someday. Because when we grasp this, we will begin to experience it to a much greater degree than we currently are. Our experiences in life will mirror this truth in Romans 6.4. So the response we should get should be like this, yes, but I've never heard anyone of not being sick, disease, etc. Yes, but I see sickness, disease, etc. in this world. That's the point. That's the point of a newness in life. It's a kainos. It's a kainos life, right? It means kainos life, unprecedented, unheard, uncommon, different from anything seen, known, or heard about. This is the newness of life. A life experiencing the unseen, unheard, and unknown in every area of our life. A life of no sickness, no disease, no lack of any kind, death having no say in our lives, right? Because it is finished. So, para mas maliwanag, ganito yan. Okay, para mas maliwanag. Ha? So, the more we meditate on and grow in the truths of finish, and the less and less our experience of sickness will be. Having said that, I myself, ha, I experienced the flu uh, the week before Christmas, I had, I have had or had the flu. I only said we only have because we only have the life of God in our bodies. I simply said, or we we should simply say, we experienced something that was presenting in itself itself as contrary. 
to the life that is supposed to be manifesting. So, question, why did I get why did I get sick? Why did I, what did I do? Nothing. Because those questions have to be eliminated from our thinking. It's not about because it's not about what we do or don't do. It's about what he did. Let us immediately pivot, right? If we are questioning, what did I do? What did I do? Whatever, whatever. Pivot. It's about what he did, right? So toss out that question and simply rest your body and mind. Number two, may mga conversations like, oh, uso kasi yan ngayon. It's flu season and it's because the weather. So we pass it to one another. Mm. No, you have to say, no, my life doesn't have flu seasons. The weather doesn't determine your health. And for the last comment, actually, I love what um, this brother said, Brother Benjamin B. He said, what someone else has doesn't get on me. I get life on them. So Benjamin probably butchered, uh, uh, you know, uh, he, he has very, very strong belief of the soul life in him. Number three, is it COVID? I don't know and I don't care. So actually, when I was sick before Christmas, I didn't Google COVID symptoms. I didn't go to, and I didn't even get bothered to be tested. That's my opinion. Ah. Please know that there's never any condemnation in Christ. Be led of what the Spirit and do what He says is beneficial for you. Because every good gift, including doctors, hospital, and medicine, is from the Father. And while you do those things, continue to grow in your understanding that He has 100% completely severed you cut you off from sickness and disease. Number four, is sickness normal then? No, it is not our identity. That's my opinion na, and it's scriptural. We are, because we are completely 100% severed, severed from it. My identity, your identity is healed and whole. The flu or any sicknesses is not our new normal. We should not expect to get it ever again. In fact, let me say it a bit stronger. I will never be sick another day in my life. Why? Because of the impassable sea of blood and the life of God that Paul says, according to Romans 8.11, to my body. So what did I do to feel better? Nothing. I simply rested in what I know. By his stripes, I am healed. I didn't focus on it, worry about it, whether I get whether it would get worse. I rested in what I know. The life of Jesus Christ always manifests in my body. And I always recover because he always leads me into triumph. And then I rested my body and my mind. We are not, we are not the sick trying to get healed. Our position hasn't changed no matter what we may be going through. We are the healed of the Lord. That's our identity. So... My dear family and my friends, this is who you are. You are whole. You are healed. And let us grow together even more uh, with, with all the understanding the Holy Spirit teaching us of what he has finished for us and as us. And that, he, and that healed and whole is our identity, 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 regardless of the circumstance, circumstances we go through. And that, my dear family and friends, is chapter 11. Praise the Lord.